Hi, I'm Tiffany Roth, and welcome to episode three of The Fittest Winner. I'm so excited because we have a fabulous day planned for you guys. We're going to meet up again with Dr. Nicola Bird. We have this fabulous team with us, and we are in the incredible, historic Culver City Hotel, which is our home. So I just want to take a moment and say thank you to the Culver City Hotel for being such an amazing home of The Fittest Winner. Okay, we have completed week two we're feeling awesome really accomplished and we also had our sessions with dr nicola bird it was amazing she's graciously here with us for the recap to help the girls kind of talk it through so that we can again kind of rehash with you guys what we went through i want to hear what your experiences were like too on the app or on facebook let me know how you enjoyed your experiences with dr bird so that we can get her some more um, opportunities to help more people. Tell us about your session a little bit. Yeah, it was actually hard for me to visualize uh -huh. um, certain things, and I didn't know that about myself. I thought I was very, a very like, visual learner, visual person. So um, in reaching down, she kept asking me questions over and just kind of shutting everything out and focusing. And um, so that was a big breakthrough for me. And then I focused more on, okay, how was I feeling as a 10-year-old versus my current self? Uh -huh. Visualization, it's more about really connecting to what you're feeling. It's not so much about the visual, it's about really being able to connect your feeling. And when you're disconnected from your feeling, which is a typical pattern of people with emotional eating patterns, because you want to numb out, you want to not feel. So the whole goal is to really get you more connected to your feelings and more connected with yourself. Tell us more about what your emotional breakthrough was. What realization did you have about your emotional eating patterns? And how did you change that? realizing what triggers it for me. And what is that? And that would be being at home, living with my family after mm. not having lived with them since high school. What are the emotional triggers with living back home? Boredom, um, not having privacy, um, uh, not being like an independent adult. And then what does food give you? Uh, comfort. Right, so yeah. what's the change for you now for the session? Go do something that makes me feel independent. Oh. Yeah, like take a walk or go on a run. Um, go out with friends rather than turn into food or hanging out in the kitchen. That's really true because a lot of times if you feel powerless in mm -hmm. a situation, because yeah. mm -hmm. that's really what it's about, yeah. you can regain your power by deciding, I'm going to eat this. And usually it's attached to some sort of rebellious food, like, I'm going to do this anyway. I'm going to eat mm -hmm. five bags of chips or whatever, you know, to sort of kind of compensate for that feeling that you have. Right? right? The great thing about Dr. Bird is a lot of times we know these things intuitively about other people, but we don't really, you know, See take it. a look at ourselves. So we have to look at ourselves. How about you, Mina? Um, did you experience any breakthroughs? Dr. Bird kept pressing me to like dig deeper and deeper. And there were times where I was like a little confused, like I don't know like what other answer you want from me. But she really allowed me to dig deeper and find, like I figured out that a lot of my eating is tied to escaping and mm -hmm. if I'm procrastinating on something or if I'm stressed out, mm -hmm. um, you know, instead of making that healthy choice, the unhealthy one tends to be like a lot quicker and like less effort. Right. So I thought it was helpful when she told me to like visualize another version of myself mm. and like what would I tell like the other Mina, mm -hmm. which was like an unusual like way of thinking about things because I never think of it that way but that helped me really step outside of myself sometimes like I'll work hard towards something but then the follow-through isn't there mm -hmm. Dr. Bird was telling me you know instead of saying like you need to try harder how do you think that would make someone feel if you're saying you're not trying hard enough if you're more encouraging and compassionate with yourself and understanding of that, it's easier to reach a goal. Like right away, I mean, we can think about this and talk about this, you know, ad nauseum, <laughs> but you were able to identify yeah. that what she thought was actually a reinforcement was tearing yeah, her down. Tearing her down. And also giving her the tools and the strategies to create that change. Right. Because we can be aware of something, but we really don't know how to change it. And that's right. where we get really stuck. What do I do? This is the change. This is the action I can take. These are what I can do to create that transformation, to break through that emotional eating pattern. This is why I'm encouraging you guys to really, really do the session because even having the awareness of what you're doing is the first step towards making a change. I definitely feel like I'm an all or nothing type of person and kind of similar to Mina, right? But 
but it comes out to the fact that when I feel like I've already failed on something, that I'm just done trying. I just wash my hands with it. So what change are you going to make now for yourself? Okay, I'm going to use the language you gave me, which is that every little bit counts, mm. and every little thing you say to yourself, you're actually hearing whether or not you're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, so me telling myself like, oh, you're, you're a failure because you can't do this, or like you're a failure because you didn't keep your word this time, are, is not helping anything, but it's really just pushing me back a step. Never be frustrated by falling down. Get frustrated if you don't get back up because it's really in our biochemistry, that sort of trial and er error, sort of feeling our way into things, and then keep going. This is how we survive, you know? Things happen and we keep going. So having the tools and first recognizing that that's what you do. I eat because I love to eat. I eat because I don't have enough willpower. But as we went into the session, everyone discovered that it really wasn't about loving to eat, it's really about not handling the emotions or dealing with the emotions or even being aware of the way that you, your relationship, the relationship you have with yourself. If you have your poor relationship with yourself, like any poor relationship, it's yeah. going to reflect in problems and issues and, and it's for you and all the, the viewers out there, emotional eating, putting on weight, getting into struggles like that, but because when you're emotionally eating, you're trying to numb yourself, you'll become unconscious of the pattern. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. So by becoming aware, you're now empowered to create change. And the other big pattern that I saw, which you, a lot of you have talked about and have heard, is the beating of, of the self, being really self-critical and hard on yourself. Most emotional eaters, a real problem. Because you eat to avoid problems or feelings or emotions, and then, you feel guilty and ashamed and beat up on yourself because you ate and you're gaining more weight and it just goes around right. and it just keeps going yeah. round and round and yeah. round. And you're just on this awful roller coaster and you're never coming off. Studies do show that dieters who, or people trying to eat well, when they are functioning from self-esteem, if they eat junk food and they don't beat up on themselves, they stop eating the junk food. Those who eat junk food and beat up on themselves, they keep eating it because mm. they feel so bad about themselves, they keep eating. Right. But the ones with self-esteem who don't feel bad, they don't need to keep eating to <laughs> keep, you know, stuffing those emotions down. Every time I woke up and worked out this week, or when I've done it in the past too, I'm basically thinking in my head, I don't want to be in this place again. What Negative. place? What place? where I've gotten so overweight and, and just out of shape and I'm, I'm working out and I'm in pain and just really suffering right now that I, I don't want to be in this place again. I shouldn't be in this place. And I've been thinking that every like with every exercise that we've been doing in the morning, every step that I take, and it's so negative. And I really didn't think of it that way, but you're, you're totally right. So I just want to, I'm beating myself up every step that I take. During our wow, days. wow. Even if you were your most fit, you would still need to be there working out. Mm -hmm. You never get to a point where, okay, I'm looking good, I don't have to work out anymore. You always have to work out. That place that you don't wanna be in, of like growing and struggling and testing yourself, that's fitness. That's the place. That's the place where you can thrive. That's the place where you can get to know yourself. That's the place where you can step up challenge yourself and feel great at the end of every day. This is a celebration mm -hmm. of your capacity. So just change the script because this is not gonna end. If I'm not here, when I'm not here, we're not in this challenge, you guys still need to get up and do your workouts every day. You still need to do your positive self-talk. You still need to eat healthy. This does not have a destination. This is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It never stops. The place, it's just a time and space. Session with Dr. Bird was, it was tough. Um, but I did um, have a lot of breakthroughs. I realized that I was angry about a lot of things since that happened when I was young, being bullied, and that I go to food for comfort when I'm sad and angry. And you know, we have these emotions, I'm sure Dr. Heard has already told you that, you know, when they're unfamiliar emotions, you wanna just shove them down. push them down, mm -hmm. you know? So, you're talking about the breakthrough. 
what's the transformation? What's the strategy you're gonna use now? Being positive, for sure, number one. Being positive and just loving myself. And what are you gonna do with all the emotions that you're having now? Just take a step back and relax, calm, be calm, breathe, and just know that I can own that, you know, that emotion. I, I can be um, powerful and, you know, own it and not let it take over me, you know? One of the great things about um, having the tools to deal with emotional eating is that we have to eat, okay? We have to eat. There's food all around us. And so as we're on this journey of the fitness winner, it's not like you can lock yourself in a room and just work out and lose weight, you know? You have to do your life, you have to eat, and things are gonna happen, things are gonna come up, you're gonna get triggered, you're gonna get angry, you're gonna have some negative self-talk. You're gonna be sad. All of these things are facts of life, but what you do with that is what really is gonna make the difference from whether this is just a thing that you're doing for eight weeks or this is a real lifestyle change. So I'm going to say this again because I have done it and now the girls have done it. Do your session with Dr. Bird. Follow the program because it's gonna help you make that breakthrough to make fitness a lifestyle and a journey not a destination. And I'm gonna keep building on this team member after team member until we are so strong that we have redefined fitness and revolutionized the feeling of self-love. <laughs>